welcome to another episode of Anders Mill Knits. I am your host, Emily, and welcome to our nest. If that's not backwards for you, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Ravelry as AKA Millie. I also have uh, two Ravelry groups. One is the Anders Mill Knits uh, Ravelry group, and the other is uh, for the Love of Minis group. In addition to that, you can find me on Instagram as aka millie907. And here is our co host, Watson. Let's see if I can get him up here for you. There's Watson. He's been pretty sick. I've been trying to groom him uh, little by little, just with scissors and things like and because uh, our grooming um, wand, whatever shaver thing ran out of battery and I can't find the freaking plug-in to recharge it so got halfway through grooming him last week and it ran out of battery so <laughs> I've been taking scissors here and there he is scared of scissors so he does not like it at all but he is feeling better now he no longer has worms he no longer has an infection He's still on antibiotics and he's on the tail end of uh, taking the steroids, but um, he's uh, now, and we're titrating him back onto regular food rather than just kind of like soupy rice kind of stuff. So he is feeling better and on the mend. And there's been quite a few of my friends around Anchorage who have told me that their dogs have gotten worms. And Watson never had worms before. I figure he must have gotten it when we went on our camping trip. Maybe he got into some bird poop or ate a rotten fish that was left on the shore. Like, I don't know how or when he did that because I was always watching him, I thought. But, you know, maybe not. So, <laughs> that's a little bit about Watson that you probably didn't want to know. But there you go. So, like I said, I'm your host and I want to welcome you back. It's been a while. Um, I have been having quite the adjustment period going on. So we're going to do uh, reviewing notes really quick here. Um, so my life has been changed quite dramatically. I moved back from Kenai, like you guys know, because I did podcast once, once I moved back. And um, so I'm now living with my boyfriend, Jeremy, in his condo. And the day the day after I moved back, we went into hunker down mode. And the two days after I moved back was my first day of my new job. And my new job is quite different from my old ones. And on top of that, I was having to learn a whole new format, which was doing mental health via te what we call telehealth. And so everything is online. And it continues to be online. I was working from home for about two and a half months and I'm now back at my regular office uh, for the most part. There are some days where, like today, where I get to work from home, so that's really nice. Um, and I've just been, I love my new job. It's so, it's very challenging. There's a lot of things that I need to brush up on. There's a lot of new aspects of things because I'm what is now called a co-occurring clinician where I work with people with both mental health and substance use concerns and so uh, and my main focus is on getting them through a recovery program for substance use and then you know I use those other things too and so I haven't actually really truly ever focused on substance use issues I have had clients in the past like every clinician has that has that um most of the time they have been seeing actual substance abuse counselors, people who are specifically trained in that uh, area. And so I usually always focused on the mental health aspect where on this one, I'm doing both. So it is very challenging for me. And then also the whole aspect of not in person. And so I'm having to try and build that rapport via uh, video conference or even sometimes only telephone because people don't have access to video conferencing um, technology. And so it's been really challenging. It's been really um, pushing the limits of my abilities and 
I've been really exhausted because on top of that also, you know, I'm living with my, my boyfriend who I absolutely love and adore. And that is a whole new experience for me. And then the whole COVID thing. And then of course, I would not be honest if I didn't talk about the protests um, that are going on all around the world right now. That's been shocking in a good way. I hate how it came about. I wish like people like George Floyd did not have to pass away um, or die. Let's not call it pass away because that's kind of belittling what happened. I, ju I just wish that those things did not happen. And perhaps I'm naive in a lot of ways because I tend to think of people in those positions as good people. And I know that that's not necessarily always the case, or they are good people, but they misstep. I know that in my profession, I, I do that as well. Like people that are counselors, I tend to look at them as like a little bit, not a little bit better, but you know, they, they're trying to reach above and beyond what maybe you might do in normal day-to-day -day lives. And when they fall from grace, it's really hard. And I've known a, a couple people in my profession who have done that. I sort of fell from grace. Like I thought I knew everything, right? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't think I knew everything. But I thought I knew enough so that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have fallen into the trap of being in an abusive relationship. And I wouldn't have put myself in that position where I was vulnerable and was raped. Like I thought I was able to see the warning signs and get myself in a safe place and I wasn't um and so those things really humbled me you know and I'm hoping that what is happening now with the protests is also creating a culture of humbleness of change and um I want to really encourage you guys to listen to Down Cellar Studio podcast because she is, she has a lot of great resources in there and she is, talks about her white privilege and she talks about how she's trying to take a more active role in um, peaceful protests and understanding racism and where she stands in all of that. And, I, and I've been really, really impressed with what she's been doing. Uh, in my day-to-day -day life, I work with people who are marginalized. I work with people um, who are of different ethnicities. Uh, the, I think, actually, I don't even have a single client right now that is not Native American or Black. And so, at the moment, I've been really just really focused on that and really focused on promoting what is known in my trade as advocacy, speaking up for yourself, letting people know what you need, and but doing it in a positively, a positive confrontation manner. So we don't have to think about the word confrontation as a negative word because confrontation is actually a positive thing. It's you um, presenting yourself in the face of adversity. So we don't have to present ourselves in the face of adversity with anger and with distrust and with um, a show of force, of aggression. We can show ourselves with understanding and compassion and patience, but also we can show ourselves with um, presenting our knowledge and our viewpoint and speaking up for what is needed and what we, what we need. So I've been really focusing on that a lot. It doesn't seem enough to me. And at the same time, I do know, I recognize, I just finished a group with a bunch of people and we were actually talking about this topic again. This was their check-in, like how are you advocating for yourself in your day-to-day -day life? And I actually had them like tell me about the specific last time that they remember advocating for themselves about something pretty major. And each one of them was able to talk about it. And each one of them had a viewpoint around racism, about how they had to advocate for themselves recently around 
prejudice and racism. And it was very humbling to me to listen to their stories. And I can't share them with you, but it was a really powerful moment. I didn't cry, but I wanted to, you know. So there's my little tangent for you on that. Um, so I've been I've been aware of that. I've been aware of the political environment around the presidential race. I've been focusing on that a bit. I'm not going to share my viewpoints around that. I don't feel like that's appropriate here. Besides from that, I've really been focused on my relationship with with Jeremy. Uh, we just celebrated our one year anniversary as far as like dating world, and he gave me this beautiful bracelet. For our anniversary and I haven't taken it off since he gave it to me so that was really wonderful and then we took a uh, camping trip in his dad's motorhome he let us borrow it we drove that down to Anchor Point and we drove down to which is a wonderful wonderful area it's mainly a place where people who want to go fishing uh, go camping and then and they bring their boats there and then I'll I'll have a, I'll include a video of them actually um, pushing the boats out with heavy machinery. I don't know what to call it, but into the the bay there. Uh, it's not Resurrection Bay. I forgot what that's called now because Resurrection Bay is over in Seward. I've forgotten. Hmm. Um. And so we went there, saw so many eagles. It was just amazing. Saw a, a brown bear. We think no, I think it was a black bear because it was pretty small and the face was a lot more narrow. Saw some moose and, and some yearlings, and we absolutely loved it. Went on a lot of walks, and then to try and celebrate our anniversary, we went into Homer, which is a it's a very um, I don't want I don't know what you want to call it um I guess you kind of call it a hippie-ish town uh very craft oriented very artist like artist community type and but we drove into town and we noticed there was just a lot of people out and uh while there was a good portion of them wearing masks we didn't feel comfortable getting out and mingling in that group um, because we just felt like it would, we would be putting ourselves in danger, even though we had masks too. So instead, we went to the farmer's market, which wasn't as busy, uh, and we felt like, and we, we made sure to keep our distance from people, including the vendors, and we got ourselves some honey and some jam, and then we went to eat some lunch, and I ordered a brisket sandwich and my brisket tasted like fish, which would have been great if I had ordered fish, but I didn't order fish. <laughs> so I was able to eat about four or five bites of it. I even had Jeremy taste it and he was like, yeah, that tastes like fish. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. So they didn't offer us a refund or anything. We did take it as a, um, as leftovers because we thought, uh, maybe it was me because I haven't been feeling well. I was also on my period at the time And so we were like, okay, maybe it's just maybe it's just that I need time Nope, we got about 20 miles down the road back to work going towards our camping and I one second I was knitting on my socks and the next second uh, There was literally throw up all over the cab like it came out of nowhere and it just kept coming. <laughs> so Jeremy had to find a place to pull over and I'm like retching and throwing uh, and throwing up and yet still trying to clean up everything that I had already thrown up and everything. it was just and Jeremy's trying to keep Watson back and he would have helped me but I was like no 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 you stay over there I don't know if I'm contagious I don't know if if this is food poisoning I don't want you near this I got it all over my clothes and so when we got to a place where I could go down to a river I uh and the and the mat on for the for the front cabin you know that how they have the floor mats down there so I got it all over that and I just couldn't get it cleaned up so when we got to a place uh that had a river I went down to the river and I did the old-fashioned beat them against the rocks kind of thing and that did a really great great great, great job it took me a little bit but I got it all cleaned up 
I didn't throw up any more after that. We figure I kind of had like uh, food poisoning, but we thought wouldn't food poisoning have last longer, but we don't know. So that was interesting. Fun times, fun times. But I, overall, that was, honestly, that was a ridiculously fun weekend. I, like, even with the little hiccups, I just enjoyed it so much. Jeremy and I sat by the fire at night. It was cold. Uh, it was in the 50s and 40s. Um, and then we played dominoes. I read a lot. I knit a lot, which I haven't been knitting hardly at all since COVID started. Just, it's been really hard for me to knit really hard so but there's so much more I could share but we're already 16 minutes in so I think we should just get into the meat of it all don't you think so let's talk we don't have anything that is finished I have no FOs so we're going to talk about works in progress which I believe I call so uh, finished objects is case notes and in session there we go in session it's like the body of it is done i finished the body of my ooh, once in floral sweater here we'll go this way because that string is bothering me and then we'll stuff this string inside so those are the for the sleeves there we go isn't that beautiful oh i love it so much and then the body is done it's super long, it's tunic length for me. Um, so I did about 18 inches in the body after the, after I split for the sleeve, after I split for the sleeves, I did about another 18 inches. Yeah, it was a lot of yarn. I got really tired of it after a while, but it worked. I got done with it and then I got burnt out and I said, I am not doing the sleeves right now. So it has been sitting for probably a month and not being worked on. But I will get back to it. I'm not sure when, but I will. I'm not I'm not in any hurry. It's okay. Things can take a while. This is also big on me yet again. I mean, I cannot seem to get a knit myself a sweater that is not humongous on me. I went down to I think an extra large and I usually knit an extra extra large and yet it's still big on me and so I must be a lot smaller than I think myself to be I don't know people but it the body is done and it's not it's not like grotesquely large on me it's actually a kind of a nice uh size as far as like ease positive ease on me so I'm gonna I don't know how many inches it is like maybe three or four inches of positive ease but it it drapes lovely and so I'm actually quite pleased with that um but I do want to be very cognizant of the fact that I have skinny arms and I want to make sure that when I do the arms on this one I don't sit there and have a lot of fabric underneath my arms like in this kind of thing it's totally fine that I have extra fabric, but in a knitted sweater, it's just gonna bunch up and feel really uncomfortable. It's, it's done that to me in the past. I haven't enjoyed it. So I just wanna make sure right from the get go that that doesn't happen. That is my plan. So that is something that is at one time in session, sort of a case note, but not really, cause this is the body of the sweater and also in timeout. So there you go. One thing I have been working on that I've been really enjoying is called the ribbed bralette. And I am almost done. I have, okay, so what am I knitting this out of? Do I not have the, well, I know it's Barnyard Knits. I think this is the rose colorway, garden rose colorway, uh, something like that, but I don't know where I put the ball band. But here is the bralette. Let's see if I can show you. It looks super small, but it stretches like mad. So um, it stretches way more than I need it to. Same with this area, because I like when I was knitting it, I was like, oh my gosh, is that gonna cover my honkers? But it does stretch quite well. And 
the it was it's been so enjoyable to knit and i love this i cord um technique that she's using for the bra strap it's not an i cord and yet it looks like it it's literally knit one slip one and it ends up looking like an i cord it's awesome and so i knit this a tiny bit shorter or at least i tried to um, than the 11 inches that I thought I needed because it does stretch and I don't like it when the bra strap stretches too far down and then my boob is or is falling off my shoulder and then my boob is maybe be showing maybe be 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 so I am on the home stretch I am on the I cord strap for the right side and so I just have to finish that and attach that and then weave in my ends and block it and I am done. In fact, I don't even know that it really needs to be blocked. I'm just gonna like soak it. I'm not going to like block it out. I'm gonna soak it, lay it out to dry, you know, just to clean it up because it's been going with me everywhere. So the yarn needs to be cleaned up some, but I am loving, loving this. And so um, this is being knit on US size four and the ribbing down at the bottom was US size two. And then uh, also this little detail here. I love this, I wanted to point this out. So we do the, the one by one rib at the beginning, then we switch to three by three ribbing, and then we switch into a twisted ribbing for the top edge banding on the back. So I really like that. So. I'm hoping to get that done today, maybe even tonight. I don't know. Every time I tell you guys. Sorry about that. I got a call from work and it interrupted. I thought I put my phone on airplane mode, but apparently I also have to turn off the Wi-Fi in order for that to happen. So that that is my um, Ripple Bralette. Uh, I don't remember who it's by, but it is fun. I probably will knit another one, depending on how it feels once I get it on me and stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. I am knitting on my um, Star Trekky socks for Jeremy. I have one sock finished, and this is yarn by Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And then the toes, heels, and cuffs are by, oh my gosh, I forgot their names. That's Fiber Nymph Dye Works. If they're really popular people, but I don't particularly like them. I don't know. I kind of feel like they're snobby people. Uh, not Fiber Nymph. I love Fiber Nymph Dye Works, but the people that did the other yarn that I have here, I was in their club for a little while, but I ended it because I just, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes you just get this vibe from people and I just didn't like the vibe. I just felt like they were snooty. And I didn't like it. Can't remember who they are. So there you go. I probably shouldn't even mention it because <coughs> I don't want to alienate people. <coughs> so I'm on the second sock and I am, I just started the heel. So I finished the foot. I'm on the heel. Oh shoot. I just pulled my, my needle out. Crapola. Come on. You can do this, Emily. Keep with it. Keep with it. You got this. You got this. I did it. There we go. Got to be more careful. So doing that. And this is in my Star Trek -y bag as well. And this is a gift from a really good podcasting friend, uh, Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. And uh, I'll put the link at the bottom. It's so wonderful. It's the perfect size for socks. And I love the inside checker. And we've got a pocket can you see it there we go pocket with the fabric from uh the outside there there it is oh i just love it it is so much fun and it's one of my favorite designs which is a drawstring i love that because drawstrings i don't have to worry about the zipper getting tangled up with my yarn i'm in love i'm in love so this has also been going with me everywhere. That does not mean that I've been knitting on it a whole bunch, but it has been going with me everywhere. So um, also have big plans to do more work on that. Um, I also 
This is um, a bag from, she has it written on it. Ah, there it is. Adorn Knits. I love it. It's birch, birch trees with little robin A, I mean not robin, woodpeckers on them. I love this bag. It is a zippered bag, yes, but it's good. And inside is my blanket that I'm knitting on. I've forgotten what this blanket is called. You'd think I would have been more prepared, but you guys know me. I just go with the flow. And I finally felt like podcasting today, and I wasn't going to argue with that. So onward and upward. So I finished um, one column of my chevron blanket, and it's all twisted up. And I got on to the second column and I don't know, I was, I just, all of a sudden I was like, ah, oh, this isn't as fun as the first column. And so I just stopped, but I want to keep going. I, I like, I really, really enjoyed the, like doing this first column. And what I did with the second column was, is that I didn't want my chevrons to all be the same length for each mini. And so I knit with this gold one for, you know, a little bit, like maybe a third of what what the length of the regular one is. And then I started in on another mini. And so what will happen is at the end of this row, I'm gonna end with the gold as, I think, maybe I'll end with the gold, but that stripe will start about three quarters of the way through this one and it'll be good. It's nice and long, it's nice and long, yeah. I like it and I'm doing it all in my minis that I've been getting from um, row one and I've got so many I've got over a year's worth I want to start I want to start back up with that subscription this is my favorite subscription I've ever done um, and so stripe one is all of one dyer which is old soul fiber company and so what I just did was is literally I say on the I say the date and this is the number one two three four right of, of the order and then now for stripe number two I've got these two guys and the stripe number two is all going to be lichen and lace or column two I guess is what I'm calling it so I've got my bags of stuff here and so who knows, maybe next one, next color I'll add on is Shroom from Lichen and Lace. Who knows, I get to pick, it's awesome. So that is on my needles. I'm knitting these on size. What size am I knitting them on? Chiagu size three or 3.25 millimeter. And it's the perfect size. The, the drape is awesome, but it's tight enough that it doesn't feel too loose, right? But I'm loving it. So those are technically the only things I've been working on. And as you can see, it hasn't been much in the couple months since we've last spoken. Uh, seriously, guys, I haven't knit very much at all. Um, at first it was because my shoulder muscles were hurting so badly when I would knit and I would be in so much pain and Jeremy would be massaging me and I just I was like almost in tears and so I decided to take some time off from knitting and I was reading up on it I didn't go to the doctor because we were in hunker down and this wasn't an emergency so I was like I'm just gonna deal with it so I was doing a lot of icing a lot of massaging it of CBD oil and um, than researching and it was saying that I needed to rest it for about 14 days and so that's what I did but then 14 days came and went and I still didn't feel like knitting and I still didn't feel like it was completely healed so I just kept on waiting and now I'm just telling you guys it feels awesome like the for the first time in years my shoulder doesn't hurt my hands don't hurt when I'm knitting. My elbow doesn't pop like when I'm knitting. And so it's been interesting in that regard because I needed, I guess, this time off for my shoulder to heal and everything like that. And yet it's been hard for me to get back in the groove now that I can knit again. And I've been also very conscious about like 
only knitting for a certain amount of time before I put it down so that I don't re-injure myself. And doing a lot of stretches. I've been doing a lot of stretches. Like every morning I wake up and I go outside and I do my morning ablutions of, that's not what it's called, my morning routine of stretches. In fact, I have an IGTV video up on Instagram. It's not the greatest quality. It's not the greatest sound. It's just one morning I popped up the video, the camera, and I recorded as I was doing my thing. And actually it wasn't even my entire routine because I was trying to rush through to show you guys everything I did in a timely manner. Which we all know Emily is not good at timely manner as far as TV stuff is or recording stuff is concerned. But there is something I've been thinking a lot lately about getting back into and it is my crochet scrappy blanket. And here it is right here. This is where I left off and in fact Things are unraveling as I pull it out. And so let me fix this a little bit, but it is so pretty and fun. Look at all that. And I have this huge bag full of, oh, there's my crochet hook, uh, full of scrappy goodness. And again, this is another bag by my friend over at um, uh, Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. And I absolutely adore it. It's got these beautiful pockets again. And it is just crammed full of scraps and minis that I have. Actually, I think I don't think any of these are technically really minis. Like these, these are all scraps that either I have on hand or was given. Uh, some of them I even dyed up myself, like this beautiful hot pink, which it's kind of blown out, but that's not really the color. It's it's um it's a more beautiful hot pink. Just, I'm just telling you, it's beautiful. Um, and I've just been thinking about this uh for a couple of days now, and I'm like, I so want to work on that. That just seems so comforting right now. So I got it out this morning when I was preparing for the, to record, and I'm like, I'm gonna keep it out. It's gonna be by my side, and I am going to crochet on it this weekend. That's all there is to it. All right, so the things that I kind of purchased in my toolbox um, since we last spoke, I've only gotten a couple things. I did get a sweater's quantity worth of the colorway Orchid from uh, Barnyard Knits, which is very beautiful. And I don't know what sweater I'm gonna knit out of it, but it's gonna happen and I'm gonna be happy. So I don't know, maybe I'll knit a t-shirt. This is too much yarn for a t-shirt, but uh, who knows, maybe I'll knit a t-shirt. Could be fun, but I do like it. This is in the color, uh, like I said, Colorway Orchid. It's the Soft Fingering 75% Southwest Merino, uh, Superwash Merino, not Southwest, hello, and 25% nylon, and there are 463 yards per 100 grams. So there you go. Then I also purchased um, Lala Knits uh, from, Lala Knits from, they're my favorite podcast and yet all of a sudden, The Knit Girls, there we go. Couldn't remember their names all of a sudden. Um, she, Laura, um, has been doing live, um, live IG videos um, at noon her time since like March 17th or something like that. And today's gonna be the last time she does one, but they've been so informative. She's been so, so good. And one of them that I actually got to watch the majority of, I was so happy because normally like noon her time is right in the middle of my work day and I can't exactly take some time off to do it. But somehow one day I was able to catch the majority of one that she was talking about knitting books and spinning books that she ha that she feels is absolutely essential for her in her library. And a good portion of them I actually already owned, but there were two that she talked about, ooh, they're heavy, that I really w had to just get. And w this one is The Knowledgeable Knitter. And it is a understand the inner workings of knitting and make every project a success. And it just goes into detail about everything, like sleeve construction. So I'm gonna be referencing this before I start my sleeves on my sweater. 
So convert converting sleeves from bottom up, <gasps> sorry, excuse me, from bottom up to top down. So converting pattern stitches from flat, flat to circular. Uh, so she does all these case studies and stuff. How to know when to steek. I'm working on no stitch steek. Oh, I don't even want to know. Oh my goodness, I don't even want to know, guys. Shaping and fitting of things, right? So talking about arm so sleeping in a lace pattern. Oh my, that should be really good. Shaping and ribbing, ribbing. All this good stuff. Mitered increases to make corners. Oh, this is so good. See, I haven't really even looked at this one. I've been looking at the other one for right now. But I am really excited about this. So this is by Margaret Radcliffe. And I felt like this was actually a worthwhile investment, so I got it. I'm very happy about that, even though I haven't technically read it, because I only got it like two days ago. And then I also invested in the Essential Guide to Color Knitting Techniques, by Mar uh, also by Margaret Radcliffe. This one I have been reading. Like, this one is so crazy cool. So, like, for instance... I mean, just for the mere fact of all the stitch patterns that she puts in. Oh, did I, oh man, I just lost my place. My tag, my tag. I don't know. It just made me lose my place. But um, it just has so much, so chocked full of information. Look at that. Like, I feel like by reading this, I was reading the section about color work that looked so much like argyle argyle socks or plaid actually was this it this might have been it okay yeah this this is sort of it i can't show you the bottom back down here or wait okay there we go and i just love that i'm like oh i want to knit something with that i want to knit a pair of socks for jeremy or myself a good nice warm winter socks with that or a cowl wouldn't that be just awesome so I, and then and so this has been sparking my idea to get back into some designing. Like I'm not, I'm not a sweater designer. I'm not something that has to have multiple sizes. Technically, a designer. I've done some simple things like um, a hat. I've done some socks. I've done some mittens. Um, and, but this has gotten me craving to start designing again. And so I'm gonna. I'm going to be looking at this a lot more, but I keep falling asleep. Even though I'm excited by it, I'm opening it when I'm going to bed at night and I'm falling asleep as I'm reading it. <sighs> so it's not exactly productive reading. And the final thing I have is something that I didn't purchase. It's my swap package for the super, no, no, no. The Marry Everything and Happy in July swap. And I am so excited. Amy is my swap partner. And um, we have, let's see, so today is the 26th. So I have told myself I cannot open this package until the 1st, just in case something inside is not wrapped. So I am leaving it completely as is. <coughs> Watson's looking at me like I'm crazy. Oh, but I got this this last Monday and I am so excited. It was so much fun putting together her swap package. I really enjoyed it. And I really lucked out because my local Joann's, there are two Joann's stores here in town and they are both closing to then reopen as one store. And so I really lucked out because we have a moratorium uh, on our swap packages about how much money we can spend. And I was able to get her some really fun stuff. You know, not, I got her one unique thing, but tech, but really honestly, for the most part, just like Joanne fun stuff for like a lot of stuff um, for still under our uh, moratorium or our limit as far as our budget is concerned and so that was so much fun I am so excited oh Amy don't be listening ah hopefully you're not watching <laughs> well it'll still be a surprise right so that's what I have for you guys today I have no idea how much time what we've spent together but I am so excited that I got to sit down and talk to you guys like 
I feel jazzed. I can't promise that it's going to be every two weeks that I'm going to podcast. I just don't know what the future is going to bring right now. And I don't know how I'm going to be feeling. But like, I do know that when the mood strikes me, I am going to sit down and podcast and not let it pass me by again. Like it has so many times in the past couple months. So Thank you all for joining me. Remember, I love you. Mwah! You guys are amazing. Please remember to subscribe, share with your friends, or all your knitting goodie butt friends. And Watson wants to wish you a happy weekend. Oh, wherever you are in the world. Okay, he's looking outside and not at you guys. Sorry. Sorry. Apparently our backyard is more exciting. Uh, but we so nice and warm. I think it's only like 60 degrees in the house right now. We do not have air conditioning. We do not. So this is all natural from our weather here in Alaska. And uh, anyway, where am I going? But remember to knit what you love and love what you knit. Ta-ta for now.